That's it. Any further questions? We, we certainly have them, but before we get to those, I'd just like to thank you, Mike, for this excellent presentation. I, I know you haven't been following along in the chat window, but there have been a number of uh, replies and thank yous for what a great presentation and implementation and all the good work you've done is really appreciated. So I'd like thank to thank you. you, too, for taking the time to share this with us. You're welcome. Uh, it was fun to do. So I've, as I said, there, there's, a question, there's a few questions I'd like to get to, and one has been uh, seconded. So I'll start with that one. So if a change is made to a requirement, how are the change orders that contain links to that requirement notified of the recently modified requirement? Is that something that you've addressed at this point? Uh, not specifically. There's various different mechanisms that um, different tools take advantage of to do that sort of thing, but uh, that's a really a tool-specific thing. OSLC itself as a standard doesn't prescribe any way to do uh, what is essentially eventing mm -hmm. or uh, publication and subscription kind of uh, mechanisms. Uh, there has been some talk of an eventing work group or eventing standard in the OSLC land, but uh, hasn't really taken off yet as far as I know. Right. Well, that would be an opportunity if there are some people on the call today who see a real need for that to get involved in the community and push that work forward. Right. If, right. if it's really interesting to them. If you're very interested in, in standardizing that in OSLC, certainly uh, come to an OSLC core work group probably and, and propose that, or at least uh, look into the OSLC website and find out if there's any background material or, or other interested parties that you want to get involved with. Right. Thanks. Now, another question was about the size of your team and how long have you been working on, on these on these concepts, and how long does it take you to build what we saw today? Um, well, the, the team size was three, of which it's really only about one and a half. I did the majority of the coding. The other two were uh, representatives of the engineering community who were mainly bringing the user focus on this thing and trying to help me understand how users would take advantage of this capability to actually do their work more effectively. They were um, embedded software engineers who actually write the embedded software in the vehicle for us, and uh, they provided their valuable insights into how this would make their job easier and make mm -hmm. their lives more straightforward. Uh, so that that was their main focus, and they, they did a lot of the uh, um, automated testing development around the uh, automated testing of this connector code. So uh, that being said, we worked on this for about um, three months uh, I, with about one and a half persons full time during that time. Okay. It was some significant amount of work up front understanding how to just make Eclipse Leo out of the box work, uh, which I wouldn't include in that time. Mm -hmm. So maybe all told, uh, six months ramp up time and to get to this stage where you, you have something that works. And frankly, the, the majority of that time was spent understanding the Team Center um, APIs because they're much more complex. Mm. Excellent. That's that's very helpful. And also, as one commenter has mentioned, just knowing the composition of the team is is helpful as well. So it's good to know that you had some actual end users providing feedback into the work you were doing. And then the yeah. last the last question we've got is uh, you used the Eclipse Leo reference implementations in order to to get yourself started. Maybe they've come about too late, but have you taken a look at the uh, test suites, and have you ever run your implementation against the Leo test suites for the various uh, domains to see how well you you've implemented it? Uh, no, 
No, uh, actually, yeah, they they came along much later in the game, um, and and frankly, I'm not sure. I I probably will go back and make an attempt at that just to see what happens. Mm-hmm. But uh, because the test suites are probably trying to be as complete as they possibly can in testing the entire um, OSLC capability, uh, I'm sure that there are many things that we didn't implement that would be broken. Right. We'll see. Uh, also, part of what we've done here is extend by adding this whole product resource type to try to add uh, and into our implementation, we wanted to prove out some of the concepts we've talked about in the PLM worker. So those things are clearly not going to be OSLC compliant because they're outside the scope of the current standard, uh, their proposals. Mm-hmm. So and there, there's a lot of things that we, we know would work, but I, it would be probably a good exercise now to go back and at least try to work on those those test suites against it and see what happens. I'll take that on as a follow-up. Okay. Well, that's that exhausts our list of questions. So thank you again for this excellent presentation. Thanks to everyone who stayed uh, 11 extra minutes to see this through to the end. Uh, recordings of this will be posted to YouTube. Just some reminders, if, you, if you're interested uh, and would like to join the OSLC community, there are benefits to joining and maybe you want to participate even more, there's a member's agreement. You can go and sign in the chat. I pasted in a short link to that. You can also uh, check out and maybe use the upcoming Eclipse Leo release. There's a nice link to that as well in the chat. And finally, if you've enjoyed this webcast, I'm sure you're going to enjoy future webcasts that we will be uh, we will be giving to the, to the OSLC community. And if you want to be notified of that, there is a third link that you can just put your email address in and you will get a nice email telling you, hey, there's a new webcast coming up. So look for another webcast, uh, maybe more than one in October. There's a lot of uh, exciting stuff happening, uh, especially with the Eclipse Leo 1.0 release, which is uh, fabulous if you're implementing. The OSLC for J libraries are, can save you a lot of time. The reference Im- implementations can be a great starting point, just as Mike showed us today, and of course the test suites uh, will save you uh, save you from finding bugs later on because they it's basically a whole bunch of uh, test suites that you can run test cases that you can run in your development uh, environment as soon as you get started. So I look forward to seeing many of you in the OSLC community. Hopefully you will join and participate. Hopefully you will come and attend future webcasts. Thanks again for joining. Have a great day.